Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke. Today we're going to discuss rep ranges for cardiovascular endurance. So we've already talked about rep ranges for strength. We said about one to six reps of really intense effort. Uh, with, we've talked about rep ranges for hypertrophy, uh, about six to 12 reps of really intense effort. We've talked about rep ranges for uh, muscular endurance, that burn sensation, being able to fight that off, being able to continuously contract your muscles. And we said that was, you know, at least 10 reps, but more than that, you know, more than 12 kind of stuff. Now, what is the difference? This is kind of a nuanced question. This is, this is an interesting comparison, I think. What is the difference between muscular endurance and cardiovascular endurance? So muscular endurance has to do with the local tissue, the local muscle. There's not a whole lot of systemic stuff going on because what I'm doing here is I'm I'm stressing this muscle. I'm probably using the glycolytic energy system and my fatigue is building up. I'm eventually not going to be able to continue on, right? I am above my anaerobic threshold and I'm just trying to continuously contract my muscle. In that case, the thing that will keep my muscular endurance improving, that will keep me active, is I need to clear out those byproducts or I need to not make them in the first place. And so if I'm clearing stuff out, I need capillarization of the muscle. Um, I need blood supply directly around the muscle so that whenever these byproducts build up all throughout the muscle, they easily find ways. They have a lot of surface area interfacing with the blood supply. They have a lot of surface area with which they can use as an exit route. Okay. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Now, with cardiovascular endurance, we're talking about the cardiovascular system. We're not talking about the muscular system. And so this becomes more global, less local, right? If local is the muscle, this time global is the entire cardiovascular system. And so we have to look at the heart. We have to look at how efficient the heart is beating. And we have to look at general capillarization throughout the entire body. So if I'm looking for cardiovascular endurance, the duration of my exercise has to be much longer than my muscular endurance uh, uh, challenges, right? Plus, it's got to use a bunch of different muscles because if I'm going to maximally stress how, you know, my gas exchange, breathing in, breathing out, getting oxygen, one, into the bloodstream, and then two, into the muscles, and then three, taking the carbon dioxide out, and then four, exhaling it, um, all of those steps require that I, I challenge them, right? You remember our principle of overload and of specificity here. So with cardiovascular endurance, I'm trying to challenge the cardiovascular system. So specificity demands that I challenge the cardiovascular system. Overload demands that I have to, you know, breathe hard and my heart rate has to increase, right? It has to be a little bit harder than I'm used to. Um, yes, so principles, muscular endurance is let's clear stuff out of the muscle. Capillarization helps with that, and it also helps with cardiovascular endurance. But cardiovascular endurance has a lot to do with how efficient my heart is beating, right? Will it stretch enough to take in enough blood before it contracts and tries to pump that blood everywhere throughout your body? If it just like keeps doing this kind of thing and it doesn't really fill with that much blood, then it can't pump that much blood. Remember, we talked about stroke volume and we talked about cardiac output in a previous video, two previous videos. Uh, with that, if I'm going to stress global cardiovascular system, I need to build up that cardiac output. <clears throat> So part of that is just your heart rate response, right? We, and we've talked about that previously. And then part of that is your stroke volume. So I need to make sure that my heart isn't too contractile for its given exercise intensity or whatever. It doesn't need to beat super, super fast if I'm just walking uphill. Now it needs to beat a little bit harder and maybe a little bit faster, but it doesn't need to, you know, uh, you, you know, you don't want a heart rate that's above 150 or so. Okay. So those are kind of our rules. Now, again, uh, biggest differences between muscular endurance and cardiovascular 
uh, end endurance is that muscular endurance is local, cardiovascular endurance is global, and it takes into account the entire cardiovascular system. So we need to look at the heart, and then we need to look at the blood vessel capillarization stuff that happens throughout the entire body. And if we're going to challenge those things, we probably need a, a very widespread or very systemic type of exercise and that could be running that could be biking because i'm using a bunch of different stuff it's probably not just sitting there and doing squats because we talked about in our muscular endurance thing even if i rest at the top like that set's only going to be two or three minutes if i'm really masochistic and that's not enough time to really get adaptations out of the heart we need to be going for a lot longer than that and so i guess the the hard and fast rule of rep ranges for cardiovascular endurance kind of demands that I increase my exercise duration to at least two or three minutes.